Welcome back to Turtles All the Way Down. Space has a darkness and a mystery to it that has always fascinated us. It seems to generate more questions whenever old ones are answered. One of these big questions concerns whether the universe has changed over time, or if it has generally looked the same throughout its history. One of the greatest minds in history had struggled with this question throughout his life. It was the biggest blunder in Albert Einstein's life. At least this is what the astronomer George Gamow had said Einstein told him. What was Einstein's blunder? It was an assumption he made, and he reflected that assumption in a single term that he added to his greatest equation. His field equation of general relativity, which describes how mass and energy relate to the curvature of space. In other words, these were his gravitational equations. When Einstein was working on his theories of relativity at the beginning of the 20th century, the scientific community generally accepted the view that the universe was static. It was neither expanding nor contracting, but had a stability to it. This was Einstein's view as well. When he eventually developed and published his theory of general relativity in 1915, it was found that it predicted a universe that would contract due to all of the mass of the universe pulling on itself. However, this is not what Einstein nor the astronomical community thought was happening in reality. In response, Einstein reluctantly added a single term called a cosmological constant which is symbolized by the Greek letter lambda to his equations in 1917. This constant's function was to counteract the gravitational attraction of the mass and energy of the universe with a kind of anti-gravity or repulsive force to space. The cosmological constant then was an inherent force somehow derived from the fabric of space. So, the big question then was, is the universe really static, or is it changing? As mentioned, up until the early 1900s, an unchanging universe was the assumed scientific position. This view was dramatically overturned in 1929, when Edwin Hubble published his findings that the universe was instead expanding. Hubble's surprising and revolutionary data came from observing galaxies at varying distances from us and their relative speeds. He found that the farther a galaxy was from us, the faster it was moving away from us. Not toward, but away from us. And this relationship was linear. This was direct evidence that we lived in an expanding universe. How did Hubble discover this? First, Hubble needed to find the distances to his galaxies. He did this by using a standardized astronomical distance scale. This was done through the use of Cepheid variable stars. These stars are pulsating stars that expand and contract with regular periods of weeks to months. The slower they pulsate, the brighter they inherently are. Using their brightness helps determine a Cepheid star's distance from us. Next, Hubble needed to know the velocities of the galaxies he was observing. This he had done through measurements of the galaxy's red or blue shifting. What is red or blue shifting? All hot and glowing elements, such as the burning hydrogen and stars, have a unique spectral fingerprint. If that hot object is moving toward us, its fingerprinted light spectrum is shifted toward the blue end. Alternatively, if the object spectrum is red shifting, then it is speeding away from us. The more the shifting occurs in the spectrum, the higher the object speed is. Hubble found most galaxies to have red shifts. They are moving away from us. Putting all of his observational data together, Edwin Hubble found that the farther galaxies were from the Milky Way, the faster they were receding from us. 
To aid in explaining and visualizing this, let's imagine that every one of these yellow dots represents a galaxy, and this entire picture is our universe. A very important point to keep in mind is that these dots are anchored or fixed to the surface they are attached to and do not move unless the surface moves. Likewise, in reality, galaxies are attached to space and, with small exceptions, only move when the space they are tied to moves. Now, we can pick any one of these galaxies to be our home, the Milky Way. For convenience, let's choose this central dot as home. Next, we imagine that the entire universe expands equally in all directions, like this. The expanded universe is depicted as these red dots. They're all moved away from each other equally. The space between each dot has expanded and the red dots have stayed put on the surface space, but they have moved away from each other due to the inter-dot space having expanded. If we, from our central home point, were to look out to all the other galaxies around us after they've moved, what would we see from our perspective? This is what we would observe. You'll notice something very peculiar. The distances between each individual yellow to red dot seems to increase the farther away the galaxies are from our home. These are the galaxy speeds we get when looking at the galaxy's red shifting spectrum. The greater the shift, the greater the speed away from us. But doesn't this make it appear that we are the center of the expansion of the universe and that everyone is flying away from us? Yes, it does appear that way. But interestingly, let's view this expansion from another galaxy, say this one. From their view, the universe is expanding away from them. And this kind of perspective would apply to every point on the surface. In other words, every single point in the universe is the center of the expansion of the universe from the Big Bang. But all of this is getting us on a side tangent. What we really wanted to know was how Hubble determined that the universe was expanding. After examining all of the Cepheid variable star's distances and the amount of red shifting in his galaxies, he found that the farther away the galaxies were from us, the faster they were moving away from us. This was the smoking gun evidence for the expansion of the universe. Now, back to Einstein. Remember, he believed that the universe was unchanging, and so he added his anti-gravity cosmological constant to his equations to prevent the universe's gravitational collapse. He added this to counterbalance the universe and to keep it in a static state. However, Hubble showed that the universe was actually expanding. Knowing this, Einstein removed his now unneeded cosmological constant and proclaimed that adding it to his equations was his biggest blunder. Einstein said, Since I introduced this term, I had always a bad conscience. I am unable to believe that such an ugly thing is actually realized in nature. That was 1929. And that's how cosmology stayed. Until something very unexpected and surprising was found in 1998, which would eventually lead to the award of a Nobel Prize for three astrophysicists in 2011. A team led by U.S. astrophysicist Saul Perlmutter and another team headed by Australian astrophysicist Brian Schmidt and U.S. astrophysicist Adam Rees were making distance and velocity measurements of certain kinds of distant galaxy supernovae. A supernova is a star's violent explosion. Supernovae are some of the most powerful events in the universe and are extremely bright. They can be seen across the universe and are great distance markers. However, they are very rare and random events. The two astronomical teams were competitively studying these galactic events 
and after analyzing what they had found, both came to a surprising conclusion. Yes, the universe is expanding, but not in a linear way. The universe, instead, is accelerating in its expansion. When Hubble was studying his galaxies, he was only making do with relatively close objects. The galaxies that Perlmutter, Schmidt, and Reese were observing extended out much farther in the universe. The farther out you look in the universe, the farther back in time you are looking. It takes that much longer for light to reach us from farther out. In other words, the two supernova teams were analyzing a longer history of the universe than Hubble was, and therefore could observe what the universe's expansion had been doing for much longer. What they found was that instead of the linear expansion that Hubble observed, the universe is actually expanding like this. So, something hitherto unknown is forcing the universe apart. What is producing this acceleration? The tombstone cracks, the grave shakes, and up rises from the dead Einstein's cosmological constant. This lambda constant gives the universe its resurrected anti-gravitational repulsive force. Einstein was right all along, but never knew it. His constant was needed in his equations, after all. This constant is dark energy. Dark energy is the mysterious force that is causing space to expand at an accelerating rate. And it accounts for more than 68% of the entire energy of the universe. Okay, so we now know how dark energy was discovered and how it works on the universe. But that still leaves open the question of what dark energy really is. First, cosmologists know that dark energy must have a constant value within any volume of space. This means that when space expands and more space is created, there will still be the same amount of dark energy within the same volume. In other words, the dark energy does not get diluted with the expansion of space as, say, a gas within an expanding balloon will. The only thing known that matches this behavior in space is what is called the vacuum energy. This stuff really does exist. Vacuum energy consists of subatomic particles and antiparticles that are being created and are very quickly annihilated and disappear in fractions of a second. Virtual particles are constantly being created and destroyed in empty space at subatomic scales all the time. They are a product of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics. They have a certain amount of energy, and it is this energy that is the vacuum energy. Somehow, that vacuum energy is what is producing the repulsive nature of dark energy. The exact association between vacuum energy and dark energy is still a great mystery. However, its existence has been around since the beginning of the universe. So a bird's eye view of dark energy is that it is an ever-present energy within the fabric of space that has a repulsive force on it, pushing everything away. This force is negligibly small at the sub-microscopic realm but is very significant at cosmological scales. What does this mean for the future of our universe? Well, if dark energy does indeed remain constant and is so throughout the universe's history, this means that the universe will continue to expand at an ever accelerating rate. Eventually, everything in the universe will spread out so thinly that matter will no longer be able to clump together to form stars and galaxies objects in the far future will eventually succumb to the cold of space and will no longer radiate heat. This is a state of the universe called the heat death, where entropy will be at its greatest. This is the likeliest future scenario of our universe 
and is the view accepted by most cosmologists. By the way, as a side note, despite the potentially confusing names, dark energy has nothing to do with dark matter. Dark matter is a topic we covered in an earlier video. Check it out here. Dark energy is one of the most mysterious findings in astronomy. Many physicists, astrophysicists, and cosmologists are actively researching its nature and dynamics. It is mysteries like this that excite and fascinate me about our universe. We are a part and a piece of the cosmos. Let us continue in our wonder and awe, and also to continue asking these big questions. Thanks for staying with me and Turtles All the Way Down. Please subscribe to this channel to stay informed of new content. I really appreciate it. Until next time, stay safe and stay curious. Bye for now.